Hey everyone, welcome to the Intelligent Conversations podcast, where we believe everyone has a form of intelligence that resides within them. Our goal is to encourage these type of conversations for our audience to listen to. Without further ado, welcome to the show. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Intelligent Conversations podcast. Today I have the honor to speak with Anya Khan. She is an artist, photographer, author, web designer, and entrepreneur. Anya has been in 300 plus exhibitions in over 10 countries, which is phenomenal. I got a chance to check out Anya's artwork and guys, I was impressed. I loved what I had to see there. I thought it was really cool what she was doing. So Anya, thank you for coming on. I really look forward to hearing what you have to say today, but I want to ask you this, what kind of got you into that space? What got you into the art and creative space? Oh boy, that's a long story to start with. (laughs) Oh yeah. Uh, Well, let's hear it. What got you into it? All right, let's do it. Um, I'd always been very creative uh, ever since I was a kid. I mean, I think we're all creative as children and, and young, you know, young adults. There's this sense of like creativity and wonder that already lives within us. And I always gravitated towards it, enjoyed doing the thing. And I was kind of made fun of at times with self-expression. So I kept it really private because I felt vulnerable to share it. Then as I, you know, moved into adulthood, I really didn't think of creativity or art as something that that could be a career. It didn't even like come to my mind. Like nowadays, I know people Mm -hmm. go to art school or design school, like it wasn't even a thought. I wanted to be either a therapist or I wanted to be a surgeon taking out cancer in people. I wanted to do something helpful. And I did start going to school for those things. I was very focused on like needing a career and needing a job and being a normal person. Mm -hmm. Right. And in the middle of my education, I started to get really sick and I started to have a lot of health issues that really took me away from being able to work, being able to go to school. It completely um, rendered me unable to do those things. And where I ended up being is being creative. So I was housebound. I was having a lot of um, just time alone, which, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't mind time alone. That's fine. I was an only child for like eight years. That's fine. (laughs) I can do it, you know? I have imaginary friends. We're fine. Um, But I had to find some way to kind of express what I was going through because there was nobody was really there to help me. Nobody really understood me. Nobody really believed me. And it was so life altering. And we're talking, you know, back in 2000, you know, um, like three, 2004. Mm -hmm. Um, I only got my most important life-changing diagnosis last July. So that will tell you how long this journey has been happening of, of not being believed, not being understood. And art became this place that I returned to because mm-hmm. as a kid, I enjoyed doing it, but I also grew up in a really tumultuous um, home environment and art was cathartic for me. It was a, another place for me to escape and sing songs and draw things and make little books and do the thing. And when I was older, I, I felt compelled to kind of return there to to find a way to express myself, to express the things that I was going through and never thinking it would be on the public stage. That was never the plan, Mm -hmm. but having this drive to be a professional, be successful, want to accomplish something in life. And then kind of being just like cut off from that, the window into art itself for me, I started recognizing the opportunities of, of going six, pulling success in that way. Like, oh, okay. I had a, a, a friend of mine. Well, he wasn't a friend at the time, but a person in my life show up at one point and really liked what I did and encouraged me to get into galleries. His name is Roger. And it was a happenstance meeting. And he helped me years ago submit to galleries. And we're talking like slides. You're not like emailing a submit. Like yeah. This dates me and that's fine. I'm clearly not a young lady anymore. Um, but we were doing slides and he got me into some shows and it was difficult. I mean, obviously all of that is a whole other story of why I kept going and in that experience. 
But that's how I returned back to art and found this catharsis, this place that kept me here because there were so many times I didn't think that I would still be here. Even to this day, I have like gray hair <laughs> and it makes me shocked that I'm even alive. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I'm here. And art was the catalyst. Expression was the catalyst to help me work through and remain optimistic or hold on, you know? So that's kind of why I got into it. I didn't plan it. It just happened, but it's organically right. If that makes sense. Like it feels like it was the right path. Yeah. I, I told, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that, giving you giving us all the background on that. I think that's really cool. First off, a phenomenal story. And uh, I, I like I like hearing uh, these success stories because, I mean, it shows that everyone had to go through these like hard times, right, to get to the point to where they are, right? And I think, I think it's, again, like I, I mentioned before the show, I'm like, I, I saw your artwork and I was like, this is amazing. I, I also mentioned that I, I failed art in seventh grade. I was like, oh, maybe <laughs> this isn't this isn't for me. So uh, I, I just, uh, I, I think it's really cool. And I have a lot of respect for artists. I think it's really cool. Like you said, the expression, like it gives you a chance to really express what's really going on inside or what's really going on in the world or all these other things. It's a really great way to communicate, like express yourself yeah. in a different form. Whereas mine, I think I'm better at maybe words or writing an article, something like that. I think we all have sure. those unique ways of expressing herself. So absolutely. Uh, but I do want to talk, I do want to say that I hear that all the time with people like I'm not good at art, you know, I suck at art. And I want to be clear, you don't have to be good at art for it to be therapeutic. You don't have hmm. to be good at art for it to be healing a process for you. There's so much pressure on being good at it or producing a certain level of work. And really creativity is the fundamental basics of self-expression. The end. You don't have to be there good at go. it. So. Yeah, I, I like that point. Creativity is really the opportunity because it gives you, I think, that sense of hope. Like, hey, maybe we can get out of this. We can do this. So I, I, I like that you shared that. That was, that was good. And yes, I may not be good at art, but maybe I got to sit down sometimes and, like you said, have it be therapeutic. But uh it's it's been a while let's let's just say that so <laughs> well everything's also artistic like you said writing that's artistic if people want to you know build an engine in a vehicle and rebuild an old model car that's artistic building a garden is artistic i mean all of these things really do ride that line of creative expression yeah i i i, I kind of want to touch on something there you said i think i think everyone wants to you know, build something from nothing to like make it something. I, that's like the one thing that they want, right? It's like they want to start with nothing, then make it into something. Like people actually give them the recognition that they deserve. I think, I mean, I I'm more in the uh, entrepreneur, like, I, and you are as well. Uh, like, but I have a couple uh, businesses that I run, and from there, uh, it's it's a lot different than our. I would say I was I was going to ask you that uh, later down the line, but uh from there it's i started with literally absolutely nothing right like absolutely like it, i put in maybe a couple hundred bucks and i'm like all right let's see where this takes us and <laughs> from there totally. it's been working a little it's you know progressing starting to get bigger and it's funny because every time it's like oh man like i did that i did that and it's like it gets bigger it's and totally. bigger right so i want to i want to ask you this though kind of back on the the art side of things what What's kind of the process of like, you know, getting into those galleries, into those, like getting your artwork recognized? Because I think a lot of people that do want to go into that field kind of struggle with finding how, like how they get their artwork out there. That's a really great question. There's so many different ways to do it, depending on if you're wanting to be a professional artist or if you want to be more of like a hobby artist, but you're still participating in galleries um, the gallery world has changed exponentially since, um, geez, so, I mean, since I've been in it, it's much different. Artists can um, move their own career in their own direction without a lot of gallery support by social media and building their own newsletters, all of that stuff. So we have a lot more power in our hands to build our own career, which is excellent. But then there is this relationship with galleries, like any 
any business like entrepreneurship or whatever, it's creating these collaborative experiences, creating these relationships where both parties benefit from it, right? Like, okay, you help me, I help you, and we grow together. And getting into galleries or uh, getting into different spaces, there's different types of galleries. There's vanity galleries where you can pay to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. Um, a lot of people frown on that, but also a lot of people get their start that way too. So there's negative and positive to everything, of course. And vanity gallery would be like a monthly fee you would pay to like ha have a portion of the wall to hang, you know, monthly in its community. People get together and they they do it, which is nice. But sometimes people are on a different level and they're like, I'm not paying the show. You're going to pay me to show like, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So if that's what you want then you really need to look at your work, compare it to other people and not in a negative way, because I'm very against social media and competition mm -hmm. and whatever. There's room for everybody. There really is. And compete about your compete against yourself. Really competing against other people isn't going to do you any good. It's really you that you have to worry about. But look at other people, find out which genre you fit in, find out what, what galleries might be good for you. Look at community things within your local you know, local city, regional area, and then, you know, look at places that are even outside of your state that are, you know, even outside of your country, but start, you know, start, start expanding and seeing. And then the other thing is, if you do find that target, you're like, that's the gallery I want that my work seems to fit there because I had an experience. I ran a gallery for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, my health actually got in the way and I had to close it, which was kind of a bummer, but I had, a, I got to see a lot of the other side of it, which was exciting. And I can't tell you how many times people didn't follow directions and didn't look at what we did. So we did pop surrealism. And if people don't know what that is, it's like, you take those two worlds together, pop and surrealism, you put them together, and then go Google it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's this whole unique thing. But I had this landscape guy write me and he's like, you know, I'd love to show my work at your gallery. And I was like, well, we're a pop surreal gallery. You're a landscape artist. This really isn't our fit. And he's like, well, isn't landscapes pop, like pop art? And I'm like, no, it's not, you know, like <laughs> doesn't make sense. But he wasn't really looking for the perfect fit. He was kind of casting the net out widely looking for support, which we all want support. We all want to be loved and cared for and nurtured and accepted and brought in. But you're going to get rejected if you're not making cautious, you know, um, thoughtful intentions in where you want your work to be. And don't get discouraged if you get a, you know, a, a letter that says no or they ignore you. Try again. Keep trying again. And I think almost anybody who's self-aware knows a lot of very successful human beings have been denied hundreds of thousands of times mm -hmm. i myself have been denied hundreds of thousands of times <laughs> over think... <laughs> even now nope that's a no and i just you kind of brush it off and don't take it personally and then you get up and try again because maybe that wasn't the right time for you and the right time for them maybe it's not the correct match maybe maybe they're horrible people and it you it's good mm -hmm. you didn't get involved <laughs> i mean there's so many reasons why so really the tips are seeking out looking at information, looking at other artists in your genre, looking at other galleries, approaching them when you do follow their rules, you know, they'll have guidelines, yeah. you know, I want this information, please put your JPEGs this way. If you don't follow the rules, it'll go in the trash. And if you get denied, don't take that as a sign that you're unworthy or, you know, you suck. Take that as a sign of, I, I need to try again, or I need to look at another place. Yeah, I phenomenal words there. I think a lot of people, even if they're not looking to get in the art space, can actually benefit from that. I think, again, like you were talking about, you know, people that are trying to get into this. And there's people, I mean, I hate to break it to you guys that are listening or watching right now. There's going to be people that say no to you in this world. And it sucks. It's the worst feeling. And you're just like, man, like I thought, and it, it's a little bit of an ego, right? We're like, oh, I thought I was good type of thing. Totally. But but at the same time, it's it's good for you because then I think some of my best like decisions I've made in my life or in business, whatever it may be, 
has been when someone's told me no, or, Hey, this isn't that great, or this sucks. And they give me kind of that construction, constructive criticism. Cause then it gives me an opportunity to say, all right, how can I improve? Like, how can I be a better person or how can I improve my artwork? How can I improve this business? And it gives you, so then you can level up and get into those elite categories. And I think that's, again, that's what we all want. We want to build something from nothing to something. So yeah. if we um, can't take constructive criticism either, then we're not going to elevate, right? Mm -hmm. You need to be able to take it in and see your blind spots and see the places that you can improve. And it does hurt and it does suck. Yeah. I mean, I got denied this about like, I'd say like a month and a half ago to something I was really excited about to, yeah. this big proposal for and, you know, having a successful art career, you know, you have a sense of like, yeah, I'm putting out something good. And then you get denied and you're like, ooh, that's humbling. Humbling. <laughs> that's humbling. Yeah. I yeah. I, I, I get it too. Yeah. Humble humility. This is something uh oh someone close to me uh really told me. And it's humility is funny because once you think you have it, you've lost it. And I'm just like that makes sense. It's so true though. Like once you think, oh, I'm I'm being humble, it's it's not true. But it's also at the same time, this I want to touch on this. I think having humility is also being confident in your abilities too. Like when someone asks you and says, Hey, can you do this? It's not, Oh no, 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 no I'm not that good. Like there's a lot of people that think I like humility is that where I think it's more, no, you rise up to when people are like, Hey, can you do this? They're like, Oh, like, thank you for thinking that I can do this or that I'm capable of doing this. And I think that right there is one of the coolest things. And totally. so I think confidence and humility as much as, we often kind of separate the two. I think they actually play hand in hand together. And that's, that's just a thought that I think uh, goes hand in hand, but. Uh, no, I agree. I, I totally agree. Because if you're somebody who can't take it, you know, mm -hmm. then, then you're not confident, right? Exactly. So like if you, you, you know, you can't take, I mean, of course there's confident people that can't take things. There's all these barriers, <laughs> yeah. but you know what I mean? Arrogance generally speaking, type of thing. Yeah. As a confident person, you know, you might feel bad about it, but you can easily adapt to that and go like, yeah, you're right. Okay. I'm confident enough to step in, step up and know where my position is. Try again, rather than it just completely flooring you. Cause that just, that shows that you're just your confidence and your, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice is being weird. Um, your confidence is lacking in a way to support you, right? Like you're mm -hmm. getting hit down real hard and that's okay. People have that happen. I have that happen. I think you probably had it happen. Yes. <laughs> we all have that happen. It's a human, it's a human experience. And it's, it's hard to just kind of like, okay, and we will move forward. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Know? It's, it's, it's taking that step forward. That is the hardest part right there. I think as much as we get, you know, that feedback or criticism, it's man, that sucks. It hurts. But then you take totally. that step forward and it prevents it from happening again. One thing, because you remember it as much as we, I think we try to, you know, remain optimistic. And I think that's something, I mean, you mentioned that entrepreneurs, especially we have to remain optimistic because there's so many hard times that or hard things that you have to deal with. And, but at times it's the funny thing is, is we remember like the hard things, like none of like you, you can lay it out word for word, but when you got that, uh, like, that big deal I guess you can remember that as well but it's it's funny how they kind of both work hand in hand when you get so, just this awesome positive experience it's just as good as the bad bad experience you've gotten so I I think the the positive experience always outweighs the negative experience that you have and that's what is a good way to keep going taking that step forward is you know recognizing yeah. hey you know sure this sucks right now but down the road, there's going to be a positive experience that's 10 times better than what I'm feeling right now. And that's just going to keep you going forward and, you know, reaching for the stars. So yeah, I, I, totally. I want, and if you, and also people have this negative bias where we recognize and remember negative experiences mm -hmm. based on our own personal need for survival. Yeah. Right. Like that's why we remember negative experiences and the, and the mm -hmm. positive ones we do. And then we just kind of part, part, you know, compartmentalize them like, oh, that was good. That's great. Put it <laughs> away. The other stuff gives us like 
you know, a safety thing like, oh, that wasn't good. How do we protect ourselves and being able to try to turn ourselves to those positive experiences and really focus on how amazing those experiences have been because it's hard not to focus on the negative. You mm-hmm. know, it really is, hard, it not is. To, <laughs> hard not to do that. Yeah. It, it takes a serious amount, again, like humility and gratitude. <laughs> you have to, you have to be grateful. Like, Hey, like I'm grateful that there's some people like, I mean, that's the thing I sometimes find myself like, Oh man, if only I had this, then I would be successful entrepreneur. Oh, if only like we, it, it's a good thing because it actually helps us you know, again, move forward, push ourselves to be better. But at the same time, I, I look at, I think again, that comparing, I look at, you know, some of these ultra successful entrepreneurs. I'm like, man, like, I, I, that's awesome. I wish I was them, but I know for a fact, they're sitting up there like, man, if only I could do this. And, and I, and I found myself doing that. And then the, there's a couple of kids that are a little bit younger than me. And they ask me like, yo, dude, how are you just doing this? Like at this young of an age and you know, you're not even going to college and you're doing this. I'm like, oh, like, it, it, it almost is like, oh man, like I was, I'm turning into that exact person that I was looking at saying, oh man, they just, they're complaining about, I'm like, man, I just turned into that exact person that I thought I never would be. Right. And I think yeah. again, having that gratitude to say, Hey, like I'm grateful, like that I got this sale or I'm grateful that I got yeah. this opportunity to be at an art show or I got, I'm grateful. Like, I think that really helps um, put into perspective, like Hey, like I have a great life. <laughs> like as much as it sucks sometimes and you know we get these down times most like generally speaking we all live pretty totally. good lives. So I, yeah. I and you and you also the ball's always moving, is it mm-hmm. not? Like it just always is and if you're always looking at what the future holds and you're not in your present which is something that's very hard for me as yeah. well. It's, it's always like, well, what's next? What's next? What's next? Especially with my illness, losing such a large amount of time for me, there's always this urgency for me. Like mm-hmm. I must do 500 <laughs> things rather than just yeah. being like right here, right now with you in this, that's it. This is all, this is my life in this moment. 10 minutes ago, 10 minutes from now, it doesn't matter. Exactly. That, and that kind of helps you, you know, so then you can overcome that, you know, fear, fear of failure. Cause that's ultimately the one thing that holds everyone back, I think is, you know, that fear of failure. They, they think, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to fail. If I go into art, like it's, I've seen the statistics and I'm like, or I've seen the statistics of running a business. It's nine out of 10 businesses fail. And uh, uh, there's a famous uh, phrase uh, from Robert Kiyosaki. I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he, he says, he's like, well, if nine out of 10 businesses fail, make 10 businesses. Cause at least you'll get one. Right. <laughs> and I'm just oh, like, I'm like, it's so Is true. An entrepreneur? Yeah. Well, yeah. he, yeah, he's, he wrote the book, rich dad, poor dad. I don't know if you're familiar with okay. that, yeah, I've heard of it. but I, I remember he talked about, uh, it was an interview and he's like, well, if nine out of 10 businesses fail, start 10 businesses, <laughs> like at least one of them, one of them will be right. Like put the odds in your favor. Like don't, okay. don't just sit there and say, oh, everything's against me. I'm going to fail type of thing. No, like make it in your favor. And I, I don't know if you, I think you mentioned that as well. You have to play the game, play by the rules, right? If you're going in with a landscape type of art, it, you're, you're not going to win. You're playing against yourself. So I think that right there is one of the most important things, right? You got to play the game as much as we like, oh, I'm going to define my own game. You can't make your own game unless you haven't played it first. You have to understand it. And then you can you know, create the game. I think that's something a lot of people could benefit from if <laughs> they understood. Totally, that. totally true. Yeah. And I have a quote for you too, that kind of was similar to the one you said, mm-hmm. um, and I've said it for years is um, fall down seven times, get up eight. There you go. That's yes. a Japanese proverb. And it's kind of the same thing, which you just said, you know, take it a, a step further, right? Just go, go an extra step, get up again, do the 10, do the thing. Yeah, I, I totally agree there that it, I, oh man, do you know by chance that's by I, or like, it's, it's just, just a an proverb. old Japanese proverb. Anytime I've looked it up, it just says Japanese proverb. So there's really no, no person, which is kind of a bummer. Cause I want to know the person. I know. Right. Yeah. I bet that was a phenomenal person too. I think they, they kind of, they, they probably understood life a lot better than we did because <laughs> totally. it's as much as we kind of sometimes find ourselves uh, 
you know, oh, I'm just going to, you know, just quit right here. Let's, let's call it quits. Uh, I, I think that's a bummer because I, I think it, usually you, ne- you never know when that success is going to happen. I think it's, it pushes you just to the brink where you're just like, I can't take it anymore. And then you get that big break or that big, that overnight success that everyone talks about all the time. That's where I think yeah. really, where it really happens. So I'm going to drop the intelligent question of the day for my audience here. And I think, uh, so there's a lot of, you know, there's entrepreneurs that listen to the show. There's also a lot of kids, 18 to 24, they're trying to figure out, you know, what they want to do with their life. So the intelligent question of the day is, what helps you not quit? Like, what is, what do you think is the best way to just keep going forward? What is the best way to just make sure that, you know, even when all odds are against you, what's the best way that you don't quit? I mean, I think that question for me is probably very unique, but um, it's kind of a twofold thing. One, when I've dealt with all these health concerns and being ignored and told that, you know, it's in my head and whatever for almost 20 years of my life, um, the interest to stay alive has kept me going. Right. Um, but the other one, the twofold, maybe more relatable answer is I, I've kept myself not completely focused on one thing all the time. I feel like when we completely harness ourselves into one thing, yes, we should niche down. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do marketing, yes. like I get it. Yes, there are important things to do, but you have to make sure that you have this balance, right? Like I could just go headstrong into one thing and I can just do that. But I run three different businesses. I do my art. I run an educational platform for people that deal with trauma or adversities mixed with art as well as I have a design agency that I've been running for 24 years. So for me, it helps me to kind of go back and forth and not just be burnt out on one, right? Like, oh, I'm doing Mm -hmm. this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this every day. And my thoughts of this are every day. And as entrepreneurs, people doing their own thing, it doesn't just fill a nine to five uh, conversation. You're talking about it at dinner and the evening. It's in your head when you're going to sleep. It's taking over your weekends. I don't know many entrepreneurs until, of course, they're at a certain level of success that are not working 60 plus hours a week or working more than the average person would work in a normal job. I mean, I mean, that's just my opinion from what I've seen. Of course, again, there are things that don't fit because there's always variables. But generally speaking, entrepreneurship takes a lot of time and a lot of energy. And most entrepreneurs can't pay other people to do a lot of the things. Yes. <laughs> so they're doing all the things. They're doing the accounting. They're doing the, you know, they're doing the packing, the shipping, the whatever. They're all departments. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot. So by doing both, it really helps me to like do art. I've kind of moved away from that as a business aspect. I used to focus more heavy on that as business, mm-hmm. but now it's really just a place to play and do and kind of share. And then I focus more on, you know, my design agency and we work with, you know, people, we build websites, we do marketing campaigns, we do branding, we build EDU platforms. So it, it gets both sides of me going really creative, but I also like to be logical and strategic. And I think as a human being, whatever you like, like it may be like you're working and you like to play tennis or you're working and you like to do X, Y, or Z, make sure that there's Mm -hmm. that balance. You just don't burn out because you will burn out. And when you burn out, most people who burn out then get such a bitter taste in their mouth over that business that they end up letting it go. If you can keep it at a place where it still remains enjoyable, it's still taking your time, but it's not making you stressed angry, you know, all of these negative emotions, you have to find a way to balance that. And kind of with art, that was one of the reasons why I moved further away from art Mm -hmm. because I was so stressed about it at one point, like how am I going to make my bills and this piece better sell? And if I don't get likes on it and you know, what if it doesn't sell at the gallery? What if they don't invite me back? And I'm like, Oh my God, like, I don't want to live like this. (laughs) It's exhausting. And it ruins creativity for me. So I take creativity over into web design and strategic thinking and working with companies. And I'm still creative, but I'm making Mm -hmm. money 
and I'm making exactly. solid money and it's secure and I'm not worried if something's going to sell, if I'm going to eat. Right. Exactly. So that's kind of where it is. I think that balance for people going to school, working, family, friends, are you taking care of yourself? Are, are you having a good balanced work, you know, enjoyment life? Don't burn out. I mean, I'm somebody who loves to drive things home. Like, you know, I'm the type of person like, oh yeah, I'm going to move and I'll have boxes at my house tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, I do, I like make calculated risks and just do it but that can burn me out. Like just running and running and running and running and running at something. So it's that slowing down, making sure everything's balanced, making sure your purpose is there. Why are you doing it? Are you doing it for money only? Or do you have a care for it? And if you do have a care for it, are you, are you putting your best out there? And if you are putting your best out there, are you just trying to tailor it to the people that you want to consume it? Or are you coming at it from complete and utter like passion and interest and you know anyway there's so many things that you know, one can do to keep going but that's for me that nice balance of not getting burnt out by the the very things i love yeah i thank you for sharing that i think a lot of people i i, I like what you had to say there everyone that's listening that's the intelligent answer of the day obviously so that that was that was awesome and i think that's that's really cool i've never heard anyone say that to kind of separate cuz I think we hear a lot of people say today, hey, whatever your passion is, pursue that type of thing. And I'm like, yes, that's true. I think everyone should pursue their passion, right? Or find, you know, another way to pursue their passion, like kind of what you did in graphic design and all that. But at the same time, if, like you said, if you can't pay the bills with your passion and all of that, then all of a sudden it's like, oh, shoot, like, what am I supposed to do? Like, and it becomes more of a stress instead of a passion. It's like, and I think that, that can make you, you know, end up not liking the very thing that you sought out because you enjoyed it in the first place. And right. If you enjoy ice cream, if you enjoy ice cream, mm -hmm. are you going to eat it every gosh darn day for the next no. three years? <laughs> no, you will get sick of it. It's that basic premise. It's like ice cream's great. Not every day, not every day <laughs> of my life. Exactly. I, that's a great analogy there. So <laughs> again, I, that I think I definitely will be using that in my life because I some I find myself kind of guilty of I'll, I'll admit it I there's something I'm like once I've committed myself to something like I like this I'm gonna do this I'm like I'm gonna be the best right I'm gonna just I'm gonna go after it and I'm gonna make sure I do everything possible to be the best I'll put in as much time as I can I want to be the absolute best but the thing is kind of what you said there it kind of you know becomes dull and it's like oh this is this isn't as fun as it used to be, or it's not as great as I thought it was going to be. And I think that I, I've started to separate this because it's funny. I, so when I was back in high school, I was on the basketball team, love basketball, still love it today. And I ended up getting cut my junior year and senior. So uh, that year it sucked, whatever. And then junior year, I mean, senior year came along. And I just had someone say, hey, you know what? Just go to the open gym. Just play some basketball. And I forgot how much fun I had playing that. Like, I had gotten so focused on, like, all right, how do I do, like, this move? Or, like, so focused on the fundamentals, improving, getting better at it, you know, becoming the best. That I forgot, like, I actually love this sport so much. So now I kind of go out when I need, like, to de-stress, to, you know, detox, <laughs> to detoxify yeah. myself. I'm like, all right, let's go. Let's go hit the gym real quick. Let's just shoot some hoops, you know play this game that I forgot how much I loved. So I, That's I a great get lesson. Thank That's you. a great lesson. I love it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you again, though, like sharing that. I think a lot of people kind of forget to kind of separate the two. And I especially at times to separate the two still, it's still a work in progress. You know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things I'm very driven like you and it's, it's hard to pull yes. back when you want something so bad and, you, and that's what you love, but yeah, it's, it's a work in progress. <laughs> hey, no, I I'm sure, I'm sure you'll, you're doing great. I, I mean, like you said, you're focusing more on the graphic design artwork. It's, I think that's good. I mean, it's one thing, right? A passion, but one makes you money and one's just pure love, right? You just love it yep. so much. And I think that right there, that's, that's all you need. Right. And if you make a couple bucks there, that, that's awesome. Right. Like that's, that's when I buy more art supplies and I'm like, cool. Great. <laughs> but yeah. That's, that's the fun part. So, you know, I, I hate to, hate to wrap this up. Uh, I'm 
kind of looking at the time here and but I you mentioned you have your graphic design agency you know your education uh, correct me if I'm wrong after this and then your artwork as well so what's yep. the best way like people can reach out to you if they want to you know connect with you you know get advice from you you know train with you or do business with you what's the best way they can get a hold of you or you know find out who you are see your awesome artwork awesome thank you for asking so you can find my art at my name it's anyacon.com and you can find me on all different types of social media with the same handle our educational platform where we mix art and therapeutic approaches and using art as this creative um, element of healing that is called createforhealing.com. And we're also on social media. And then my design agency is light owl design. And again, we are on all the social platforms. So you can, you can find me almost anywhere. <laughs> all right, sweet. Yeah. So for those of you, especially if you want to get into like the art field or anything like that i would check that out it's always good to learn from someone that's already done it and uh if you would like to do business with her reach out there and i think she would definitely enjoy that i think that would be great so anya thank you for coming on i i definitely enjoyed this one this was a fun episode you were really relaxed i just thank you again for coming on <laughs> oh wonderful thank you so much for having me and giving me, me this opportunity i really appreciate it Thank you. I, I tried my best. So <laughs> everyone, that is Anya Khan. As you can tell, she's a very intelligent person, has great things to say. And I would go and see uh, her stuff, check it out. Again, I checked out her artwork. It was awesome. Just go see it. And I think uh, you guys will be amazed at what you see. Stay tuned till next week. We have a great guest lined up. I am excited to see what that episode brings as well. See you guys next week. And let's get after it. Hey, everyone. If you liked this episode and would like to hear more, be sure to hit that subscribe or follow button. We release a new episode every Wednesday for you guys to listen to. Thank you guys so much for the support that you give. We could not have done this without you guys. If you would like to be a potential guest on the show, check out intelligentconvos.com and there should be a form there for you guys to fill out. Thank you guys again, and let's get after it.